Today, we're going to talk about intermittent fasting and longevity, and we'll take a look from a molecular and clinical perspective. So before we dive into the topic of intermittent fasting and longevity, let's clear up a common misconception. Intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating are often used interchangeably, but they're not the same thing. According to Dr. Sachin Panda, intermittent fasting typically involves both extended periods without food and a reduction in total caloric intake. Think alternate day fasting or the 5-2 diet. Time-restricted eating, on the other hand, limits your eating to a consistent daily window, like say 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., without necessarily reducing how much you eat. Time-restricted eating focuses on aligning food intake with your circadian rhythms using timing, not caloric restriction, to drive health benefits. That distinction matters when we talk about fasting as a tool for longevity. Fasting requires that you eat less food. So now let's talk about intermittent fasting, not as a trend, but as a biologically coherent intervention for aging. The real value here isn't in skipping breakfast for aesthetic reason. It's in how fasting toggles molecular switches we know matter for health span. Things like mTOR, AMP kinase, sirtuins, autophagy, circadian gene expression. Calorie restriction is the gold standard in model organisms, but intermittent fasting offers a scalable, sustainable way to mimic many of the same pathways without turning your life into a metabolic science hit. At the top of the mechanism stack is autophagy. When mTOR is suppressed during fasting, lysosomal pathways ramp up, breaking down dysfunctional proteins, damaged mitochondria, and intracellular junk. You're not just burning fat, you're taking out the biochemical trash. This includes mitophagy, lipophagy, and proteophagy all processes that get sluggish with age unless they're periodically reactivated through nutrient deprivation. Then there's insulin and IGF-1 signaling. Chronically high insulin is a hallmark of accelerated aging. Intermittent fasting reduces basal insulin and suppresses IGF-1, especially when paired with moderate protein intake. This downregulates the P3K AKT mTOR axis and upregulates FOXO transcription factors the same genes involved in DNA repair, oxidative defense, and longevity in multiple species. You also see higher NAD plus levels and increased sirtuin enzymes that help clean up DNA damage and support mitochondrial function. And let's not ignore circadian biology. Your metabolism is not static, it runs on a clock. Fasting that's aligned to circadian rhythms like early time restricted feeding improves glucose tolerance, it lowers inflammation, and sharpens metabolic efficiency. This isn't speculative. It's clock gene expression in the liver, muscle, and adipose tissue adapting to your feeding window. Eating late, you're working against your biology. Ketones also deserve a mention. After about 12 to 16 hours fasted, you'll see an increase in beta hydroxybutyrate, not just a fuel source, a ketone, but a signaling molecule that inhibits class one HDACs, modulates NLRP3 inflammasome activity it improves oxidative resilience. It's a biochemical switch that hits multiple aging pathways. The most compelling human data centers on early time restricted feeding. For details on how much protein to consume for your circumstances, see my other episode about protein and longevity in the show notes. So here's the framework. Eat during the day, fast at night, maintain muscle, and use moderate fasting windows. 14 to 18 hours is plenty. Layer in resistance training two to four days a week. Cycle in deeper fast or fasting mimicking diets periodically if desired, but don't make extremes your baseline. There are legitimate caveats. Compressed eating windows can create micronutrient deficiencies, especially calcium, magnesium, vitamin D, vitamin B. Women of reproductive age are more hormonally sensitive and may need more conservative protocols to avoid menstrual irregularities or thyroid suppression. Adherence also matters. If intermittent fasting breaks your social rhythm or leads to disordered eating patterns, it won't last and it won't help your health either. Ikaria and Sardinia give us ecological proof. These aren't fasting zealots. They're populations whose daily structure, early meals, modest protein, long activity periods between feedings, naturally mimics time-restricted eating. Their labs, low IGF-1, high insulin sensitivity, low chronic disease rates. That's real-world validation, not just theory. There are no randomized controlled trials showing lifespan extension from intermittent fasting in humans yet.
but we do see consistent improvements in surrogate markers of aging. Fasting glucose, insulin, triglycerides, CRP, blood pressure, and more. These are all meaningful. It's not immortality, but it's substantial influence on your trajectory of aging. Intermittent fasting is not a magic bullet, but when it's aligned with circadian rhythm, nutritionally sound, and muscle preserving, it's one of the most evidence-backed low friction tools for modulating the biology of aging. It's not simply about how little you eat, it's about when and how strategically. So until next time, stay strong, stay curious, and slow your age.